placed on my heart um, a message about forgiveness. Giving forgiveness, receiving forgiveness. I know that um, sometimes we don't even realize that we've hurt somebody or the way we said something offended somebody or the way we did something and sometimes it's so often it's it's not even in our mind it's not we're not even thinking the way the other person perceived it or we knowingly did something dumb and or said something or or whatever but um, it's not always it's not always easy to ask for forgiveness although we should all reach that point and when we can't we ask our Lord to give us the grace to do that because it's a wonderful act of humility and it needs to be done. Um, but what about when you've been hurt? What about when the Lord asks you to forgive somebody for something that has grieved you or offended you? That's hard, isn't it? That's really hard sometimes. The deeper the wound and the deeper the pain the harder it gets. It's like, Lord, how could I forgive that person for saying that or for doing that or for not doing that? Whatever it is that offended us. Jesus says that all sins begin in the mind. It's amazing how even the symbolism of the sacred heart of Jesus, so the celebration of the beautiful feast day that we celebrate today, how the crown of thorns is around the heart of Jesus. You know, um, the heart and the mind, right? Everything is in the mind and in the heart. And God calls us to be a people of forgiveness. In forgiving someone, it does not negate what happened. It doesn't mean that you didn't do anything wrong. The other person didn't offend you. Whatever the case may be. Those that are in Christ, those that want to go to heaven, those that want to, you know, imitate the Lord as he calls us to do, live by the scriptures, walk in faith and in trust. We're called to surrender that, and that doesn't, again, it doesn't mean that it didn't count or it didn't happen. It simply means that you're the judge. I trust you, God, that you will handle the situation because we are all God's children, and at some time or another, we're on either side of that aisle of needing forgiveness or asking forgiveness, right? And we want that mercy when we do things or say things that someone else has been hurt by. We want that mercy and forgiveness. Well, this is what Jesus says. Be a good example of, of the, actually, I'm sorry, I take that back. This is a message from Our Lady about what is in the heart of our Lord. Be a good example of my son Jesus. Love your brothers and sisters across the board. If you're rela your, rela your relative brothers and sisters and your brothers and sisters in Christ, the world. Okay. Be a good example of my son Jesus. Love your brothers and sisters. Honor your father and mother. Pray for them all. Bless them often, especially if it is hard to do so. Forgive. How much mercy, love, and forgiveness do you desire from my son? And I think that is a really critical question to ask each one of us, to ask our Lord. How much love and mercy and forgiveness do I need from you, Jesus, today, right now? Because that puts things into perspective for us. It helps us to come to a heart that says, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes, and I need God's mercy. I need forgiveness. I need healing. And that must be extended to my neighbor, brother, sister, mother, father, whatever the case may be. They need that too. Pray for them all. Bless them often, especially if it is hard to do so. Why would she say that? Especially if it is hard to do so. It's a deeper wound. The harder it is for you to do so, the more that person who has hurt you needs mercy and forgiveness. 
They need God, the Holy Spirit, to move in their heart. Father Rippinger, a well-known exorcist, teaches that in the devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, she grants us, through God, she grants us the enlightenment of the mysteries of God. She will tell us if we ask her, as we pray that rosary, where it's just not repeating words, that in our heart we need to ask her, Mother, because we love Mother, right? We love our Mother, Mary. She will talk to you. She will give you to understand, to know deep in your heart what, um, what virtue we need to grow in. Where do we need growth in our spiritual life? Our Lady will guide us in our thinking. She will give us to know. She has that blessing from God. In Our Lady of Sorrows, she stands with us like she stands with Jesus at the cross because she wants us to be in the best possible place before God. She will give us to know where we need to, what we need to work on in our, in our hearts, in our, in our spirit, in our life. Where do we need help? And we're all in the same boat. We are all sinners, seeking God's mercy and forgiveness and his love and the enlightenment that comes from our lady as mother. Pray to any saint, she says, of your choice. Who do you love? What saint touches your heart? Who is the saint that you have a devotion to? Pray to that saint and ask how much your soul is in need of forgiveness, mercy, and light, love, right at this very moment, to be with God in heaven, if that were the case. If you were in a moment, in a minute, in, a, in an hour, in a week, in a month, in a year, you were going to be with Our Lady, ask as you pray. Pray with a heart of faith for enlightenment. After you receive your answer, give the same measure to your family, because you know we all need a lot. We all need a lot of mercy. We're just human beings. We're not God. We make mistakes. We fall short all the time. And so it's imperative that we, are, we understand that. We are not perfect. And we need lots of mercy before we go to heaven. Lots of forgiveness. What I love here is that she says, don't think too much about it. You know, sometimes we get over-scrupulous. And then we go like cuckoo. It's like, that's not what God is asking. God doesn't want us to go cuckoo or become anxietous. He just wants us to know through the kind-heartedness of Our Lady, her grace that she dispenses to her children, that this is where we need a little, we need to shape up here a little bit. We need to be a little bit more merciful. We need to be a little bit more patient. Don't you love that one? <laughs> um, this type of thinking, being anxious or cuckoo, if you will, or overly scrupulous, applies an extreme amount of pressure on the crown of thorns. So what is that crown of thorns? About? That crown of thorns is the, for Christ. The understanding, too, is that he took on the sins of the world, sins of the mind, where all sin begins, right? So... When we are overthinking, but he said this, and but then I said this, and then I need to do that, and then don't do that, don't do that. Don't waste your time. Just go to the Lord and pray for the intercession of Our Lady to enlighten us about those mysteries, those things that we need to grow in, and she will give us to know. Jesus lives and he loves. When you give love and forgiveness to one another, you allow him to live in you and with you. Yes, he lives. He's alive. Reach out to him. Call out to him. He hears your, very plea, your every plea. Know most importantly that Jesus, Son of the living God, loves you and is with you. Let your hearts be filled with joy, my children, Our Lady says, the Blessed Mother. So we don't just say devotions. We don't just, you know, pray Our Lady of Sorrows because it's, you know, for whatever reason we just do it before Mass. No. And you know, I, again, we're all human. We're not always totally attentive for every being. No. We try. In our 
mind will wander off over here or over there, but we call those horses in again as soon as we're aware of it. And we come and we call to mind as we are before Our Lady and we're imploring Mother to help us. You know, when we were children running to Mother, you know, to put some salve on my boo boo and to kiss it and put that band aid on. This is Our Lady, this is what she does. And she really does. She really does. When I was on my deathbed, she bent down and she touched me. So she does that, spiritually too, especially. Um, I, I fell recently, and I scraped my back so bad that when I went to my mom's house and I was talking to her or whatever, she knew that something was, you know, I wasn't feeling great. And so I said, yeah, I fell and whatever, and, and I, I scratched my back. Well, let me see. And my mom's really sick. She's got pneumonia right now, right? She's, she's really, really struggling. Yesterday she fell and it was, a, it was a nightmare, but she's doing okay. She's getting through it. As sick as she was, my mother, and now, you know, I'm going to be 67. My mother lifted up my shirt <laughs> and right next to her, where her phone is, she had a triple antibiotic, a tube of, you know, antiseptic, triple antibiotic. My mother lifted up my shirt and she just slathered antibiotic all over my back <laughs> and my elbow. I scraped my elbow. She grabbed, you know, my arm and put, that's okay. My, but that's what mothers do, right? You don't, you don't stop being a mother. She saw it here with pneumonia or whatever that she was struggling with. My mother wanted to put that antibiotic. And she wasn't going to let me go home without her doing that. I said, you know, I'll do it before I go to bed, Mom, because it gets all over my shirt and stuff. She wouldn't have it. So, you know, she picked up my... That's what mothers do. And if a mother who is of this earth is so good and so loving for their children and caring, not perfect. Our kids did not come with instructions. We fumble through things. We make mistakes. But we do our best. We do it out of love, and that's what really matters. It's a different world today. But we do our best. We try. And that's all he asked. Just like that little boy, that lady that had all these children. That little, she came for communion. She had her hands full and the other one's trotting behind her. The little boy, he, I don't know if you saw it or not, but he knelt down there and he wanted to receive communion. And Father almost gave him communion. He wanted it. That's how we have to be. We have to be like that little boy. I want this, you know? Like a child. Because to God and to Our Lady, we are children. And just keep that mindset because it causes them to bend down to us. It causes them to, let me fix this. Let me, let me put some spiritual salve on this. And that is our armor for going out. That is what we all need. So do not beat yourself up if you have hurt somebody, whatever. The right thing to do first and foremost, which I'm sure most do, is to say you're sorry. If that's not possible because of distance or whatever situation, then we pray and we ask Our Lady, grant me the grace. Grant me the grace to know how I can grow in this particular virtue of whatever it is. Okay? So, in summary, to be an imitation of Christ, to follow the way of the Lord, we, we unite our hearts with Him and Our Lady, in his most sacred and Eucharistic heart that spurt out that blood and water for all souls, that blood and water is mercy. That blood is life. The water is reconciliation. That's what that's about, mercy. And Our Lady's graces, this is what is our life blood for our time on this earth so that we can all be sitting at that banquet table having a nice dish of pasta and meatballs and spaghetti and you know, whatever you like. But that's how it is. One last thing. Last talk that I gave and I was sharing, it was about uh, how love is triumphant, you know, the love of God, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I told you I went to Bath and Body and I, I just walked in. I did not pay attention. I just saw this mountain of this perfume and pump stuff of soaps and everything. Love always wins. And, I, and I, it was right before Mother's Day. So I bought a bunch of them. I gave a bought one I told you for my kids and so on. I did not know that that was in promotion of Pride Pride Month. Pride Month. I didn't know that. I didn't see it. It's a little minuscule, teeny little 
rainbow on the thing that I didn't see. My granddaughter told my daughter, and my daughter called me mom. You know what you bought us off for? For <laughs> promoting. So in no way do I promote uh, the Gay Pride Month or whatever that is. However, if you are gay, but the heart of Christ and Our Lady, I love you too. I pray for you, and I ask that you pray for us too. I just wanted to make that clear. I am not promoting that in any way, shape, or form. And I think you know me well enough that, um, yeah, if I gave it to my kids, I am a mother too. <laughs> we had a good laugh about it. Though. We need to reclaim that rainbow, don't we? Yeah. I pray for you, and I ask you to pray for me and for our ministry and for our sisters to grow in number. We need to do that. Um, and I pray for our families, all of our families. And I pray that we have the heart that God is asking us to have, a heart of forgiveness, no matter what. When we are met with that moment of anger or hurt or whatever the case, or, or shame or embarrassment, whatever it is, then we turn to our Lord and we ask our Lady Mother, heal my boo-boo. Help me with the graces that I need to grow in, in greater holiness. I messed up. We have many chances, okay? God bless you and thank you for being here in this ministry. Love you. All right, if you would like prayer for healing, please remain seated. Our prayer minister.